Greetings and welcome to the Dare to Create show with Mitzi Linton. I've just seen an amazing movie. It's called Fuel. And it's all about fuel. It's really all about that stuff, you know, that stuff we put in our cars. And not only in our cars, those, that stuff that we use to power things. And it's actually a documentary about different types of fuel, alternative fuel. Fuel that really can create a world that we desire to live in. And I'm so thrilled because tonight we have an interview for you with the star and the director of this fabulous film. So, Josh, it's just a thrill to have you here this evening. So tell me, my first question for you is, how did you get interested in alternative fuel? I grew up in the oil refineries of Louisiana, and I actually watched people get sick, including my own family, my own mom, from the pollution coming from those refineries. So as a kid, I wanted to find a way to make energy clean and green, and that's been a 20-year 20 20 quest that ended up in this movie. Wow. Now I understand that this movie took 11, was 11 years in the making. Can you tell me just a little bit about that? We started filming in 1997 with a high 8 video camera and the Veggie Van, the first really nationally known biodiesel powered vehicle. And for 11 years pretty much filmed an amazing array of people, scientists, visionaries, um, everyone from, from people who work inside the oil and energy industry to people who really see a new green economy, the new solutions. You know, so we've, we've got people from, you know, the Exxon Mobiles to the Van Joneses of the world. And that spectrum really gives you a, a sense of how are we going to get from the oil addicted world that we live in to the sustainable world of tomorrow. That's a good question because you outlined some very, some very um, fundamental things for us to do or some strategic plans for us. So do you really feel this is achievable? And if it is achievable, what sort of time frame are we looking at here? America c could achieve complete energy independence in about five years. So it's not a tomorrow, you know, future, maybe one day thing like Star Trek. It's very real. The solutions we present in fuel are here now. They're available. Most of them are accessible to you and me. So we talk about simple things, of course, like inflating your tires, changing your light bulbs, switching your fuel to biodiesel, that kind of thing. We also look at more uh, long-range solutions, like changing our nation's fuel to algae, which is really a new potential. So tell me what the average person could do because we know we you know many of us are changing our light bulbs but what can we do particularly about that stuff that we're putting in our cars mm. well I, one of the great quotes in the movie is first change your light bulb then change the law mm. so there are many things practical everyday things that we can do sure we mentioned the changing your light bulbs now there's even a generation of light bulbs beyond compact fluorescence mm -hmm. we're talking about LED light bulbs mm -hmm. They last even longer, and they, they consume a third of the energy of compact fluorescence, so 10 times less energy than normal lights. So that's one new generation of things that people can install, as well as maintaining your current automobile. Of course, I'm a big proponent of biodiesel. Haven't filled up at a gas station in 10 years. That is amazing. How do you do that? Well, biodiesel is actually available in 200 cities across the country. Phoenix, we're in Phoenix today. There's a biodiesel pump here. So you can actually buy a diesel vehicle. Those diesel vehicles get about twice the gas mileage of regular vehicles. So right there, you're saving half your fuel bill a year. And then you can use biodiesel without any modifications whatsoever. So that's a huge leap that people can take to really vote with their gasoline dollars. That's amazing. Now, tell me about fuel versus fu food or food versus fuel. Just. Let, it, let us know a little bit about that. One of the big issues we cover in the movie Fuel is the food versus fuel controversy. A lot of people have seen these biofuel articles that show that biofuels are terrible for the environment and they starve children, they cut down rainforests. Those articles were all propagated by the American Petroleum Institute. And it happened after oil reached $147 a barrel. So, of course, what happened when oil reached a $147 a barrel? Uh, food prices went up across the world, and farmers 
were pushing out their area into the rainforest in third world countries like um, well, Brazil is a good example. Brazil started more beef exports. Well, more beef exports necessitated more land to grow more soybeans, which necessitated cutting down rainforests. Mm -hmm. Now, after the cattle are fed soybean, soybean meal, oil is a byproduct, soybean oil, which you can make biodiesel from. So this is the end of a long chain of events. People were saying, hey, biodiesel is causing all of this. No, biodiesel was the end result of a chain of events that began with high oil prices. So now we've got this international misconception that biodiesel is responsible for chopping down rainforests. Mm -hmm. And it's simply not true. And you do a really fabulous job of going into amazing detail in that in the movie. So, see the movie. So some um, government agencies, I believe, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they're government agencies, but I know that in San Francisco, and also Clark County, are all, they're already running on biodiesel fuel. Can you speak to us a little bit about that? There are many cities across the country that have adopted some kind of biodiesel mandate. Sometimes it's just for their school buses, sometimes it's for their city vehicles. But the, the reality is there, nine out of 10 school buses in America are diesel. And the air inside those school buses is four times more toxic than the air outside. All of those buses can run on biodiesel. So one of the things we're pushing for as a result of the movie is a B-20 bus mandate, mm. meaning every school bus in America should have at least 20% biodiesel in its tank. Remember, there's no conversion necessary. This is a fuel switch, not a vehicle conversion. So it's very doable. It could happen within the year. So we're pushing for that as a national, a federal mandate, as, as law, because I think that every child deserves the right to go to school and breathe clean air. Absolutely, and Clark County in Las Vegas has already done that, isn't that so? Correct, and if Las Vegas can yeah. do this, anywhere. Really? Anywhere Las Vegas, people, Las Vegas, so anywhere can do that. And um, some of the fleets, the Navy fleets, is that correct, have already instituted this? The Navy has begun experimenting with biodiesel, so we're seeing big, I mean, they're the largest user of diesel fuel in America, so we're seeing big, big institutions begin to take this on. And so, also algae. Now, I was really stunned by this. I hadn't heard of algae being able to create f fuel. And you go into a lot of detail in this in the movie, but can you just illuminate to some of us who may have been thinking algae were just for the sea, <laughs> how, how that works? All oil on planet Earth actually comes from algae. It's fossilized algae. That's what oil is. It's not from dinosaurs. That's the myth we're told as kids. Mm -hmm. So what the new technology does is it takes this process from 150 million years and turns it into a three-day process. America could produce 100% of its fuel in less than 10% of the Sonoran Desert. That is just amazing. Amazing. So if there was something that you would like for people to know that it is why this film is so different than any film, that must be not biodiesel, I think. <laughs> but if there was something that you wanted people to know about the film, what, how it's so different, what would you say? This film is a movie about solutions, and that's why it's becoming a movement. So many people want to get on board. They want to get these solutions into their communities, make this happen. That's why I encourage people, go to the website, go to thefuelfilm.com, sign up for the newsletter, learn about the movie, become a city leader, so that when we have the national release in August, you can be part of that national release, and you can really champion your city. That's what I encourage people to do, because this is not a doom and gloom movie. This movie picks up where doom and gloom left off. It's about empowerment, it's about communities getting jobs, it's about a new economy, and it's about taking America and eventually the world back from oil dependence. And that's absolutely what we're about here on the Dare to Create show. It's about daring to create a life you love and a world you desire to live in. Now, I understand that President Obama has a copy of the movie in his possession right now. That's correct. We're waiting for a response. It's only been a week, so we expect to take some time and talk to a number of people there. But eventually, the objective of the movie is that the president will watch it. In fact, there's a Facebook cause that you can get on called A Million Kids to Fuel Obama, where kids are signing a petition to have the president watch this movie.
That's wonderful. A million kids to fuel Obama. So, Josh, is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we say goodbye? Come to the website, thefuelfilm.com. Join the movement. This is a movement, not just a movie. And it's about change. It's about now. So, get involved. And Josh, you get the Gold Star Award for Dare to Create a Life You Love and a World You Desire to Live in because you truly are doing that. Your passion is what is fueling you with this, but not only that, you are an agent of change. Thank, Thank you. Very much.